in the name of this fucking disease. But she dated him for two and a half years. I can tell you what stage my mother was. I can tell you how many lymph nodes they found cancerous freaking cells in her. I can tell you everything about that process. I can tell you whoever I dated, I know what they went through, the names of it, how long they were going through, whatever it was. And and you 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 both have a terminal disease. You're going to get married, and he has something wrong with his heart, and you don't remember the name. And that's Fuck the thing that you. brought. And that's the thing that brought you together. And I, like you would at least like make a cake about both of them. I had to. I literally had to shut my mouth and turn away because I was. If I had said anything, that's when I would have blew my top. <laughs> like actually, Raven, let me go ahead and pack your fucking bag because I'm sick of your bullshit. You gotta get the fuck out of here. Oh. See, now I'm getting mad. If I just ignore it, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so she has periods that she can, she screams. Gonna, I was like, so you didn't have your period here, huh? Hold on, I'll be, I'll, you like that? I'm gonna make sure. You didn't that. have your fucking period here. Yeah, I've had a period, but it was a light one. I don't understand. It's either so excruciating that you have to go to the hospital every month, or you right, don't even good. know. Just, just shut the fuck up. I don't know. It's just, it's. I believe that some of the things that in her life that she has said are actual. Like she can spout details, and I, I give it to her. Like I said, but just don't try and make, like, don't try and one up the world on your problems and victimize yourself continuously. Because whatever compassion I had for her, whatever sympathy, whatever my heart bled for her before this is evaporated. I could never have like and this hurts my heart even saying it because she is going to get so much backlash so much to the point where she is not going to be okay and she is going to have to have some major major i really therapy. hope not though i hope not too but if people are listening to half the stuff that she said well they could also cut scene live theaters Just, just why? I like, just hope she doesn't go looking for things. And I feel like, I feel like it's just really disrespectful for us too, because we all have our own experiences and I'm not downplaying the things that she's really gone through or going through. You know, I know that you can obviously tell that this girl has had a hard life and lots, lots of obstacles and had to persevere when, you know, there was no, there's no other choice for her, you know? And so maybe this is a coping mechanism. Um, but at the same time, like we have all had bad experiences and we shut up and let the person talk and, and kind of get through this telling you guys about what happened without interrupting and giving each other that mutual respect that friends and companions do, but it's just lost on her. Any, anything, like nobody can finish a sentence or a conversation. You know, I'm starting to t talk about a legitimate conversation about the links between the hormones of birth control and the the, chemo the hormonal imbalance when you go through menopause linking to breast cancer. You would think that she would be interested in that conversation because her mom went through breast cancer a couple of years ago, two years. Conveniently, my mom went through breast cancer two years ago too. Um, and, you, and instead, she just talks about how she has to take birth control because she has bad periods. I'm like, and, and she interjects and then over talk. I was, so I was like, I'm not even, I'm not even going to bless her with the presence of this conversation because she doesn't deserve it at this point in her life. I know it's very mean. Oh my God. No, it's, here's, here's what I've taken a step back. I'm not that. saying that she doesn't deserve it. I just, I'm so frustrated and so at the end of it. And I'm sorry See, for interrupting. No, no, no. I've just, I'm, I'm at the end of my rope with her where like, I just would rather just stand up and walk away. And I think that that is the rudest thing that you can ever do to anybody. Yeah. So I, I was being, I've had an influx of emotions as well, because at first all my sympathy and empathy was just gone. Like I was like, I, I'm just going to quit because this girl needs to win this game. Like she, I, she needs to, she needs it. How could anybody else justify like they, they, they we have this here, yeah. like, you know? And like her stories and like she, when when I first met Raven and the story she would tell me about how, you know, her slim chances of, of continuing life and like her her attitude towards life and like her bucket list thing and like 
her positivity and this and that. I was like, wow, what an exceptional human being. Like, mm -hmm. this is why she was casted, like, to be this, like, to sh teach people a lesson that when it's you're- really beautiful. It was beautiful. But at this point, it's just not the things that she says do not match up with the things that she does or the way that she is. So she painted a picture for us of what she is, but now that we've gotten to know her, it's a facade. It, it's a facade. And where we have the struggle is she does have a legitimate illness. Mm -hmm. And I cannot resonate with her at all because I don't have it. But I feel so bad because it sounds so scary and it seems like such an ailment. And if I put myself in her shoes, I would be torn, right? So we are torn of a feeling of sadness, but also a feeling of, am I stupid? Because the things that you are telling me either A, don't make sense, don't add up, or just flat out bullshit. So do I humor these things because I feel bad about your illness? Or at what point do I just like, holy fuck, I can't take it anymore. I can't just keep on showing face to something that's just getting under my skin. And that's the position we're being put in. And I think it's not to say it's unfair. It's just like, it's, a, it's something that I don't think any of us have ever had to deal with. It's a really odd scenario of we are in the public eye. And of course, in the back of our minds, we're like, hey, I wanna be the best version of myself and not, you know, not, and be as politically correct as I can and be, you know, be, be a stand-up representative of who I am to the people watching me. But at the same time, you have, obviously anybody who is ill, any normal human being, does not poke fun at or, no. or, or, or say anything rude or mean to them because they're ill. But or we're, challenge what they but say. But we're in a situation where I have poked fun at and made fun of every single person in this household. Because I'm living with you guys, it's a roommate experience, we make fun of each other, that's what it is. But when it comes to her, it's like, oh. So then I'm torn into two even more things. If she does have this illness, I doubt she wants to be treated differently because of it because I have a ton of friends with illnesses or ailments or missing limbs who wanna be treated just like everybody else and not have a sympathy party for their handicap. So in my head, I'm like, well, obviously she wants to be treated like everybody else, so maybe I should poke fun with her too. But then she says these things that she does or puts, puts certain things on the table where it's like, well, clearly you don't want us to treat you like everybody else because you are trying to either suck out all of my sympathy or have me feel bad for you but I don't wanna feel bad for you. Mm -hmm. I wanna have fun and give you a good time and a, and a good experience. But all I, you are trying to make me do is feel bad when I'm around you. And I don't wanna feel bad because I already feel bad. And your positive traits that you painted once to me is what God. made me not feel bad, is what made me feel like, damn, what a cool ass person. But now I already feel bad because it sucks. Having an illness is, is it sucks. And I, I do right? think that, I mean, I think that, you know, she does have the two things. Right. And but I don't think that make her me mother also has a, a major challenge. And, you know, I think there, I think that there's a core consistency of those things that are true. And, and I, I'm not sure why she wouldn't, maybe, maybe when she came, she was, she was, coming in as the person that she wants to become. You know, that super positive person that will always kind of keep going and see the better of the situation no matter what. I think maybe that was it. And that's what I'm kind of hoping. But over a time process, a, a time period, she kind of slipped back into this older version of herself, maybe, of if I play it up, then I get more sympathy and I get more attention and then I get more recognition for whatever reason. Um, and then to look, think about her, her family history. That would make sense where she's constantly, she, she will never become, not not, not become, but like she has yet to discover the, the skill set and the ability to be her own hero because of this earlier in life tragedy. And she has yet to get over that hump and so until she gets over that hump of that previous tragedy, unfortunately, her default is to go back and be the consummate victim, but still be like, no, I'm brushing it off, it's okay, with the facade of the positivity, because truly her heart hurts. 
But the, the, the logic behind the thing she says it does is it, that's what bothers me the most because I, again, studied logic. That is a psychological damage like that makes things more illogical. Right. And it, it, it's not just her, it's anybody. It, even Josh in the beginning of this game, I was like, holy shit, dude. I respect you, don't respect you. Like my brain is going. <laughs> you know, it's all just a fallacy what you're saying. It, 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 con you, it is a contradiction. So when I hear her in a passionate argument saying, why the fuck would I hide cat years? I only have a few more years to live. Why the fuck would I do something like that? But then you hide my bowl, you hide my cup, you throw cinnamon bottles at people, um, you, you, hide coke. you hide coke. So when you say one thing and you do the exact opposite, you are no longer credible. So now I'm going, so let's say you only have a few years to live. You exactly Why do those things. You? And then other, you add other things to it and it's like, well, do you only have a few years to live? Because when you first came to this game, like I thought you were gonna die, like. It was like two years. Yeah, she made it seem like imminent death. And I was like, holy fuck. Let me make this girl's life like the best thing I can do. But as time progresses and as she adds things and takes things away, it's like, I'm not, help me understand exactly what is going on. Because I'm super confused. And I'm not trying to clown on it. I'm not trying to be a mean person. I'm not trying to be an asshole. And none of us are. It, we it, are all just I'm genuinely confused. I'm disappointed in myself that confused. I've allowed it to... to affect me in a way that I am negatively lashing out at somebody. It's because we don't know what other way to handle it. Because... Why, what happened? <laughs> I'm just confused. I can't believe it took us that long. Huh? I can't believe it took you that long. I know. And I think it's more nope. so... The, I think it's more so the confusion that is the stem of the frustration. Because we usually FIFO, right? We FIFO. We figure it the fuck out. Thank you. This situation is 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 unfightable. So that's that's why it's so frustrating, I think. So I, I don't think it's like the stem or that's the cause. It's just the situation that's frustrating. And it's natural in this house. It's natural to be frustrated. It's natural to have emotions overflow. It's natural to feel upset or sad or angry or confused because this is the nature of this game. And that's the point. It's a social experiment. And then they put certain people in here that I just get disappointed Clash. in myself when I, I lose that control. Of course, but guess what? You're losing that control in here, but on the outside world? It, think about... You're, I don't, I you're don't such a cool, my, collective person, right? You don't lose cool. your cool, right? No. But this experience has pushed you to a point where you lost your cool. I so, thrive under pressure. Like I believe, like, like I always said, pressure is a privilege, and I thrive in it. I do my best in it. So you've obviously not been in pressure like, like this angle. Maybe it's been a different pressure, like but a that. pressure like this... Yeah. You've, Arguably, you've probably never experienced. So the fact that you're experiencing it now and you're gonna FIFO this pressure, when you go in the outside world, nothing- I just call it out. Not, not, yeah, but nothing is gonna par. Nothing's ever gonna come close. So that's why you're gonna come out of here a stronger person. Which is why I first like confrontation. I already uh. loved confrontation. But now, I don't even care for confrontation because it's like, I know I can beat you in the confrontation <laughs> because I lived in confrontation for 99 days. So if you're trying to get in an argument with you in the supermarket, I'm either going to A, shut it the fuck down, B, ignore you, or C, FIFO, I don't know. FIFO. But it teaches you cool things. It teaches you about yourself. Because when you self-reflect, you're like, fuck, why am I getting so upset right now? What is it that's upsetting me? Oh, this. Well, why is it upsetting me? Oh, this. So clearly I get upset for this reason. Yeah. You yeah, you learn things about yourself. So... It's gnarly. This house is gnarly. It is. You guys done playing Batman? Yeah, we broke them. Why? Because we're too good. <laughs>